Hi, I'm Joy McDonnell. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little bunny purse. It has a sweet little embroidered face, happy applique cheeks, the handle is formed by tying the ears in a knot, and all of the shape is achieved by using good interfacing, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's all in simplicity pattern number 1208. The instructions and the pieces you need for the bunny purse are all in here, along with a matching dress for a little girl. So let's get started. When you purchase your fusible interfacing, it will come with a set of instructions. Make sure that you read and review your instructions completely before you get started. Interfacing adds stiffness and shape to your project. There are lots of different interface options available to you. Next time you're at the fabric store, check all the different types of interfacing and feel them and you'll see the differences. There are iron-on interfacings that are fusible and there are sew-in interfacings that are used for fabrics that are not heat tolerant. A velvet would be a good example of a fabric that can't take the heat and needs a sew-in interfacing. Really, the option of which interfacing you use is up to you. In general, fusibles provide a crisper result because they set the fibers of the fabric. In this project, I'm using an interfacing that's a little bit heavier than my fabric so that I have enough structure for the purse that I'm making. The key to successful interfacing is the right amount of heat, steam, and pressure. Refer back to your manufacturer's instructions so that you get the ratios correctly. Otherwise, you might end up with a little bit of bubbling when you apply the fusible to your fabrics. Even if the instructions don't tell you to, it's a good idea to go through the fusing process twice. First on the wrong side and then on the right side of the fabric. This extra step will ensure a strong, even bond. It's also a good idea to use a damp press cloth. This will help add a little bit of steam during the fusing process. The cheeks are done with a zigzag stitch right along the edge of the applique. Cut out each applique and transfer the pattern markings to the right side of the fabric using a washable marking pen or pencil. A glue stick can be used to temporarily hold the applique in place before stitching. Zigzag stitch along the raw edges to sew the applique in place. Transfer the pattern markings to the right side of the fabric using a washable marking pen or pencil. Place the pattern over the fabric and use pins to mark the ends of the lines. Take the pattern up over the pins and then mark the lines with the pencil. Do the same thing for the nose and the mouth, transferring the lines in the same way. Satin stitch is the perfect embroidery stitch for filling in a large area. And that's what we're gonna use for the nose on the bunny's face. Thread a large eye needle with six strands of embroidery floss. There is no need for a knot at the end of the thread. Begin the satin stitch by bringing the needle up from behind the fabric along the pattern line. Start at the top of the nose, then work your way down to the bottom. Reinsert your needle directly across from where you came up. Pull the floss all the way through the fabric and now you have your first stitch. Now make your second stitch right next to the first one. Bringing the thread up right next to the start of the first stitch and go back down right next to the end of the first stitch. Make your following stitches slightly narrower as you work your way to the bottom of the nose. Secure the end by weaving it through some of the back stitches. An outline stitch is the perfect embroidery stitch for the whiskers and the mouth. Begin by bringing the thread to the front of your work from the back at the left end of your drawn line. With the thread above your needle, take the needle to the back about one quarter inch and come up at the point where your thread began. Pull the thread through the fabric and repeat and continue along the line. Let's do this a couple more times just so that you can see this stitch clearly. When you come to the end, take the thread to the back only and secure the thread by weaving it along the back of the line. Now we begin the construction of the purse. First, sew the handles together. Then clip along all of the edges where there's interfacing so that you'll be able to get movement as you place the, the handle and the body of the purse together. Now, 
This one doesn't have the eyes in yet, but we'll go ahead and place the body of the purse in place and then stitch. Here's where you can see those clips really help the curve of the purse go right along the edges there. Don't forget to back tack. The purse has hook and loop tape as a closure. These go right onto the lining pieces. We'll use the pattern as a template for placement and then sew right around. Then we'll construct the lining the same way that we did the outer purse, except this time we have to remember not to sew between the notches. Leave that as an opening. So when you get to your machine, make sure to back tack right near those opening pins. Let me show you the inside of the purse. This is the lining, and we're going to put these two pieces together to give a finished edge along the top of the purse. So I have my lining and I have the purse right here, and I'm going to turn the purse inside out to get my right sides facing out. Now you'll take a little bit of time to get all of those corners pushed out and make it look nice and straight, and then take the lining and open it up and place the purse inside the lining. Once the purse is inside the lining, we're going to stitch around the top edges and all the way along the bunny ears. When you get to the machine, remember to start at the dots. Give yourself a little bit of a back tack at each place and start and stop here. Take it out of the machine and then turn the purse over and sew down the other side of the purse. And then once you have both of these top edges of the purse sewn, you'll go for the ears and you're going to go all the way around each one of those ears and sew them together. Next is clipping the curves. You want to clip anywhere where there is a curve so that the pieces will turn out nicely. We'll go ahead and use that opening at the bottom of the purse and turn all the pieces inside out. Now the lining will be at the top of the purse and that's fine. I'll need to get a little tool to help me get these ears out. It's a little bit of a tight spot. This is a piping and turning tool, corner turning tool, and it helps to turn these little tiny pieces. We'll work all these edges out, do that for both ears, and then the opening, we're just gonna sew right along that edge, right at the machine. So you don't have to do anything special, just give that some stitching right there. And then we'll go back in and top stitch along the top of the purse, right around the top edges, and then all the way around the ears as well. And I'm just pivoting when I get to the corners so they get a nice clean corner at the corners of the purse. Next are the eyes. We're just using six strands of embroidery thread and we'll stitch those eyes right in place. Give it a couple of stitches for each one of the eyes and then flip it over and tie a knot on the back. That will secure each of the eyes. Once you have the eyes done, you're simply gonna tie the ears into a bow. I used a square knot, making sure to turn the contrasting fabric to the outside. And you'll need to work it around just a little bit to get that knot just right. And there you have it, your cute little bunny purse. Thank you for watching this video. We love to see photos of your projects. Share them with us on Instagram or Facebook. If you like the tips that you get here in this video, you might also like our other sewing tips videos.